All right, everybody, you get some people in here. Let's see what we're working with. All sorts of stuff. Okay, everybody wanted me to come back. Oh, I got something in my drink. That's not good. I'm not gonna drink that now. Oh, it's fat. Okay. Everybody asked me to come back. We'll do a desert landscape on this 18 by 24 inch canvas, which you can find in my Etsy store, uh, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. So we have a completely dry canvas. We're gonna take Bob Ross liquid clear and put it in our dark section. And then we're gonna take Bob Ross liquid white and put that up into our white section, right? So I gotta have both of them in order for it to work. So tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And like I said, you can purchase this painting before we even get finished with it. And uh, it happens a lot. So if you want it, it's gonna be a sunset deserty landscape, a lot of bright colored bushes and stuff. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's get our clear oil paint to wet this canvas down, right? We have to make it wet and it's gotta be nice and slick and even across the whole thing. And it takes our black paint, our black acrylic gesso and makes it even darker, right? So it's deep darkness. It's almost like putting on a, like a clear coat. So tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Do you like desert scenes? Have you been wondering, how am I gonna paint a desert scene? And just waiting for old paint with Josh to show you how, right? We're also simul streaming, simul casting over to, to YouTube as well. So if you're watching on TikTok and you wanna see how we did this from the very beginning or whatever, if you miss a bit, if you just came in, or if you don't come in for the next 20 minutes, I'll tell you again, you can go over to youtube.com slash paint with Josh, right? And you'll be able to rewatch this entire stream over there. So let's get the old bucket out, get everything into place on our 18 by 24 inch canvas today. Where am I getting all this paint from? I keep touching clear somewhere. So again, let me come back here. We'll see what the cameras look like. I got to adjust the glare most of the time. Those are looking good, looking good. Excellent, excellent. All right, guys, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And you're gonna be able to name this painting. So if you've ever wanted to name a painting, now is the time, right? And take all that clear that we just put on there and wipe it off. Don't need all that excess clear, right? We just want it to be a little slick and you can see just how much clear comes off the canvas and off of our our black canvas area here, right there, bam, just like that. Wipe it off, you don't need a whole lot. Put it down into the trash can. Now we need to put on our Bob Ross liquid clear. Uh, sorry, our liquid white, this is the clear. We don't need this anymore. <clears throat> so where are we watching from, guys? Let me see, real quick. Let's see, watching from South Padre, Cuban Sandwich, you guys are awesome. You guys are excellent. Got everybody over on YouTube. Give me a thumbs up if you're watching over on YouTube. The more thumbs ups we have over on YouTube, the more it's gonna show it to, YouTube will show it to more people, which is what we want, right? So let's clean off the brush. I wanna show us to the whole world. The whole world should see Paint with Josh, right? We got brand new shirts. It says your girlfriend watches me on TikTok or follows me on TikTok. I got a new sweater. I got all new, all new on-screen stuff. So I figured I'd wear the shirt today. All right, let's wash off, dab off that brush. Come over here. Get our Bob Ross white oil paint, right? Our liquid white. Just need the teeniest, tiniest little amount. A lot of the times you just pick up whatever's in the top of the jar. It's not even a whole lot, right? I'm gonna dump it into different places on our canvas. And that way I'm not trying to blend the whole thing from one area all the way across and then it gets all thick on one side and not thick enough on the other side. All right, so we just wanna kind of dump it onto the canvas, you don't need a whole lot of paint, you don't want it to be super sopping wet, right? Very, very, very thin coat. So tell me where you guys are watching from as we finish prepping. A lot of people, you know, they, they never see how we do this bit because I like to start the show and we just start painting and that way we don't lose viewers, right? People look at this white canvas, this blank canvas and they go, nah, I'm not gonna sit around and wait to see what he does with that. This is taking too long, right? But a lot of times people go, I don't know how to do it. Can you show at least you know, I can't watch over on YouTube or I'm only over here on TikTok, so I'll show you how, right? Got to cover the sides with that same liquidy white paint. It's very slick. It's very wet. So again, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? If this is the first time you're watching a Paint With Josh video or if it's the millionth time you're watching a Paint With Josh video or a live show, right? We already did one live show earlier today. <clears throat> Turned out fantastic. It was like an Aurora Borealis uh, waterfall scene sold immediately during the show. And like I said, you guys can get this one at 40% off with free worldwide shipping 
if you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. And don't bring any of that white paint down into our dark area. Just try to skim along the bottom, nice and soft and flat. Everything looks gorgeous, right? Just like so. And we can make sure that we have enough just by tapping it. And if you just see the little dimples in the canvas or the little ridges of your fingerprint, you don't need a whole lot. It's just here to help that oil spread around, right? Make it nice and slick and wet. Everybody loves it wet, wet on wet technique. Okay, if you don't know how we clean the brushes very quickly, we have a five gallon bucket. It's got a golf ball basket down in the bottom of it. And that's the only thing I had in my garage at the time. I'm still a painter on a budget. And uh, I felt when I was buying all these brushes and paints, I was like, man, I don't want to spend any more money on how to clean the brush. I could find a way to do it. So I found that in my garage. And uh, I've been using the same thing ever since, four years now. Four years of painting. All right, who's ready to see a wicked cool sunset? Let me see where we got people watching from. Let's see, all right, let's throw it together. Throw a cool little sunset, deserty scene. Mm. I might be a little burpy initially, so don't leave. All right, here we go. Let's go through all of our colors. I even have some special little magic fly colors that we don't normally use. So that's the uh, rose and the magic fly. We got violet, orange, and our cobalt blue and our magic fly colors. And then our Bob Ross and Gamblin and Windsor colors are uh, bright red, sap green, Van Dyke brown, dark sienna brown, uh, yellow ochre, cad yellow, Phthalo green, Prussian blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, titanium white. Always in the same orientation, except one thing. I need a little bit more of the yellow, because I never seem to get, I always burn through the yellow, especially when we're doing anything green. If you have a little green and you mix it with that little bit of our cad yellow or your brightest yellow, it just turns the green into the most gorgeous little thing. So, <clears throat> tell me where you're watching from, guys. When is your paint anniversary? My paint anniversary is coming up very soon in, uh, in April. Let's turn off this fan. I just feel like it's getting too loud. Okay. Now we're going to come in here. We're going to work into this progression of our, of our uh, sunset. I don't want to go too dark too quickly, right? So we're going to take a little bit of our yellow, a little bit of our cad yellow, and our yellow ochre, mixing both of those together on our brush. Just dabbing them in. Don't need a whole lot, right? Nothing crazy. Got a wicked little bristle hanging off the side. There we go. <clears throat> now we're going to decide where we want our bright area just by dropping a little bit of color on there, right? And then we'll blend it out later and it'll all change and mix. And like I said, because we have that Bob Ross liquid white on the canvas, that's allowing all these thick oil colors to move around and blend, right? Without that, the, you put the oils up there and it's like acrylic. It's like, it doesn't want to go anywhere. You really got to add a lot of paint and really work at it to get it to move. So this little liquid white stuff, it's like vital vital to the technique. If you don't have it, your paint's not going to slide and it's not going to blend and it's not going to move around or do anything crazy. And that's the fun part about this technique is this liquid white does it for us. It just helps everything. It's gorgeous. A little bit of crimson, right? Got our crimson, our, our red and our yellow. I'll make this gorgeous orangey color. Now let's work out, out into here. We'll put a little bit more of that deeper crimson, that <clears throat> darker color. Just like that. Oh, guys, just wherever you want, right? Because we're going to blend it. Leave some white area for it to grow in. Now that we're out into our deeper, darker section, we'll fill this little section in too like that. All right, a little bit of red in between any bit of blue that you want to put anywhere, right? Don't want to put blue and have it grow into our yellow because what's the three P's of paint with Josh? What are the three P's? They're on my shirt right here. The amount of paint, the amount of pressure, and practice, right? So depending on the amount of pressure that we pull... It'll make all this blue want to grow in and cover all of our gorgeous yellow color out here, which is not what we want. We want it to stay nice and pretty out there. All right, little blue, little bit of black, a little bit of crimson. You make this gorgeous purple color, but don't overdo the mixture. Look at the difference between the blue and the purple color. You get all these little things, right? Little differences will happen. Little dark areas, little light areas. The trash guys decided to come and pick up the garbage while we're doing the live. That's okay. I'll just talk over you guys, trash men. It's okay. Go ahead. They can't hear me anyway. They're inside their truck. They can't hear anything I'm saying. I hope they can't. Anyway, maybe they're watching the stream. Maybe they're watching the stream. They're like, let's go bug Josh while he's doing his, uh, his painting deal, right? So take that little bit of purple. And again, you don't ever put the purple and blue up into your yellow. You don't want to do that. But I like having it a little darker on the edges. 
than it is anywhere else. It kind of focuses our, our, vo our focal point right into the center, right where our brightest, prettiest colors are going to be. Okay. Now, if you guys think that I'm a, a, four, a fourth grade painter, type it in the comments. Why am I still watching this guy? What is he about to do? I don't understand why we're all here, right? And a lot of the people in the comments will tell you, just trust the process, because it's going to be the prettiest thing you've ever seen, right? Wash our brush off just like that. It's fantastic. Got to be, it's got to be fantastic, right? Okay, let's see where people are watching from. Make sure you guys got me a thumbs up over there on YouTube. Okay, going in here, right? We're going to try to leave that little bit white. So I'm going to try to come in here, taking some of our yellow, dragging it out, some of our red and crimson, dragging them in. That's why you leave this white area. It helps. It gives that little barrier, a little piece to mix with so the red doesn't grow too far. All right, mixing it up, mixing it up, crisscross strokes so you blend them together. Look, and the more that you blend in that one area, you don't have any more streaks, right? So depending on what you want yours to look like, you blend it until it matches your eyeball. What is yours supposed to look like? Is it gonna be a little brighter? Is it gonna be darker? Is it gonna have that white spot for our sun? Are we gonna drag that in a little bit? Are we gonna just go across it in the smallest thing? Just to have it kind of blend? Oh, guys, looking so cool and soft. And the more you do it, the softer and softer and softer it will become, right, out here. Not trying to grab any bit of our blue yet because we're right close to our, our yellow and, and orangey bit of our sky. So we're gonna mix up, bring us some of that red over here, right? All of the color wants to grow in and cover this area from every side. So depending on our amount of pressure, right? Which is the second P of Paint with Josh. Pressure, you can drag all this color every which where that you want it to be, right? Come up here, very small amount over there like that and just look at all these little differences in color right it's what we always talk about and then we'll come back and throw some uh, clouds over the top so again if you're just tuning in tell me where you're watching from what's your favorite sandwich if you're watching on youtube make sure you give me a thumbs up over there and uh, without even washing the brush just going through this progression of color out into our darkness it's gonna be fantastic look at this stuff now with the amount of pressure I can have all this blue grow way down into here, right? What do you want yours to look like? I always say that. Sometimes you can get your hand if you got a little, little loose canvas, because we push on these canvases, you know what I mean? You really got to push hard on the sucker. So sometimes you get your hand back behind there and just help with the littlest bit of pressure. Oh, guys, look at this, right? The more we push, the more of that blue is going to want to go. Right? I don't want to take my dark brush and have, go, uh, have it go any further over there. So why don't we grab a clean, dry brush, right? And then we'll start into our lighter area again and try to push this paint back. Slide it back. This oil paint is like, a, it's like those sequin pillows, you know what I mean? You push it to one side, it reveals a certain color, you slide it back to the other side, and you can kind of adjust, right? So you can slide this paint backwards and forwards, here, there, every which, where until you just get the softest little thing. And like I said, all depends on what you want yours to look like, right? And we're not pushing so hard that we're dragging all the colors, right? Everything is nice and soft and blended. There's no big, chunky, thick areas. Even out here, watch, you can blend this away. Whatever you don't like, change, right? Up to you. You decide what it looks like. You decide when you're done, all based on your pressure. Just like that, a gorgeous little sunset. Right area over here leading out into the darkness. How many of you guys like that? Did you trust the process? Did you hang out and you go, okay, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. And now I'm excited to see the rest of the painting, right? Now we're excited. All right, let's do this. Or just a little bit of light. Maybe we should start throwing a little bit of light back in here, just bringing it down into our our dark area and starting to light up any little bit of land that you might see out there. We could throw a couple little flat bluffs, some cactus, some cacti. Right? I live out in the desert, man. And I normally paint the water because it's so funny. People are like, oh, I like buying art that looks like this stuff around me. And I go, well, when I'm painting, I'm trying to paint like gorgeous tropical scenes because that's not something that I see all the time. If I'm living out in Utah, say, right, and I'm I'm looking at mountains. I don't want to see a painting of the same exact mountains that I'm looking at. I can just go outside. It's just funny. 
People are funny. All right, let's wash off these brushes. Tell me where you're watching from. And another way to support our family is if you don't, if you can't, uh, you don't have wall space or you don't want to buy a painting, you can go over to thelondoncandleco.etsy.com or find her on TikTok, The London Candle Co. And she pours gorgeous glittery candles and uh, they're fantastic. So go over there and find her shop and uh, see if you can get your, your own London Candle Co. candle, right? Okay, let's add... I mean, we could add the like, colors, we could do all sorts of stuff, but whatever we put on here is gonna be super bright. Okay, so we need to do something. Let's say we add a little bit of blue off in the distance. Maybe we'll have a little bit of river coming through. Very cool, cameras look good, right? Maybe back in there, we'll throw a little river. We could do like a desert waterfall. We've been doing a lot of waterfalls lately. I love waterfalls, I don't know why, they're just so pretty. and so much fun to show you guys how they fall over. Do you guys wanna see a desert waterfall scene? Or just a deserty scene? Some bushes, a little mountain. What do you guys want to see? Tell me in the comments right now. Tell me in the comments. Hey, David, what's happening? Dark Angel, how's it going? Let's see, got this. Waterfall, oh yeah, waterfall. A desert waterfall oasis. Ooh, see, it seems like you guys want to see the waterfall. Seems like it. All right, very soft, very little bit of pressure. Why don't we throw a little sun back in here first? Because if our sky is that bright and we left this gorgeous little very, very, very light area, why don't we throw a pretty little sun in there? So we'll take a bit of white paint just on the one side of the brush, not on the other side, just on that side. It's like, nope, hello, nope, he oh, hey oh. Come knock our cameras over like that. Let me sit our palette down because I don't think I could do it one-handed, right? We'll take our brush. So I'm going to come up here into that brightest area. Touch. And we're going to push. I like to rotate to the left. This makes it easier. I try to stay out of your guys' way, but you can see the brush is kind of going out into a circle. And then boom, you got this perfect little white sun way off in the distance, right in that bright area. He's so funny and fun. Thank you. I, I love all the follows. Thank you guys for all the follow. I can't see the screen all the time because I'm up here and I never like to do it reverse because then I'll be looking at all the comments as they're scrolling down. I won't be painting and it's not a fun show, right? So we tune in to see some cool stuff and uh and learn some stuff and you know with me looking at the comments going oh thank you thank, thank you thank you th it's not gonna be fun not gonna be fun so every every once in a while i pop behind and i try to give you guys some shout outs brenda k thank you for following junior thank you anthony gonzalez i appreciate it thanks guys all the little taps now up here at the top we had a million taps 1.1 million just an hour and a half ago between 9 and 10 30 a million <laughs> One million taps. I was un, I was blown away. Literally blown away. So, you guys got to really work hard if you want to be the best crowd I've ever painted in front of. You're going to have to tap your little tails off. Let's take a little bit of our Prussian blue. And maybe, I don't know, just in case, right? In case. Let's put a little bit of blue back into this darkness back here. And then we'll have a little bit of waterfall coming. It'll lead up to an edge maybe, and then we fall down... Or what do we do, guys? Maybe we'll lead it up a little bit further. We'll bring it up a little further. Anywhere that you want your white paint to show this blue, you got to put the blue down, right? If you just have it black canvas and we go over it with our white paint, it's going to be so bright that it's not going to make sense. What the heck was that noise? It sounded like a giant crash, like the trash guy crashed into somebody's car or something. That was like a bigger, that was a bigger noise than I'm used to. Okay, a little bit of our blue back there, right? So we can lead it up. And maybe, who knows, maybe it turns this way. Maybe we have a little double, double crasher. You make it like a, like a little Tetris board. But the initial thing is we have to put that color back there, right? Because if we don't have the color, so what if we led up this way? We had a bit, maybe we got a mountain or something that pushes the waterfall down here. And like a big old stone, a big old rock, right? What does your painting look like? I always say that. Let's come in here. And then we're just going to fill up. I need to get a bigger brush. You do this a little bit faster with a bigger brush. So let's clean off that one inch brush. Sometimes you just got to change. You got to go for the big two inch brush. Two inches is big, ladies. I don't know about you guys. Right? But for a brush, that's a pretty big brush. And the only reason I say that is one of the, one of the followers or one of the, the fans was like, finally, someone said two inches was big. And I was like, this is a big brush. So it made me laugh. And now every time that... I think of that, I say it now. Right, let's put a little blue down here too. Maybe we have that big waterfall come off. Our little deserty scene, have all these little flowers falling down the waterfall. Oh, guys, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool. So if you like little flowery, deserty, 
things. We can pop some cactuses up over here on the edge of like a cliff, have it fall down. What do you guys think of that idea? And we're literally just coming up with it off the top of our heads, right? It's nothing planned out. I don't like to plan out paintings. I just try to paint what I like and, uh, you know, eventually I, I try to make it look different than the other paintings that we've done. And, you know, by the time we get done, we'll see where we're at. So again, you can buy this painting at paintwithjosh.etsy.com. You can buy it before we even get through. And, oh, we're going to have like the most gorgeous little, I can see it. The water comes down, it falls. We've got all these gorgeous flowers and bushes in here. And our fall, oh, little rocks, maybe a mountain to come in. Maybe a far off little mountain, some cactuses. I can see it, guys. I can see it. Are you ready? Are you ready to rumble? Let's get a little swig of Red Bull so we can be just high energy. And uh, we'll be ready to go. Ready? All right, what do you guys think of my ideas? Little mountain, little waterfall. Oh, shoot. Are we back? Are we back? Did the thing pause? I'm sorry, guys. Uh, this whole time it's been paused. Hun, sorry. Let me, I need my charger. Oh man, babe. Hang on guys, just get, I know, everyone's gonna leave. I'm sorry, I gotta be, I, I need to get my phone charger. I'm glad I looked, so give me 20 seconds. I'll be back, I'm sorry. What is this amateur hour over here? Who tries to do a stream when they don't have a charger? What a clown. See, look, 400 people left. Here we go, guys. Okay. We got the charger. We're rocking and rolling. I don't know why I would have forgot that. Hey, thanks for the boat. That's cool. That's wicked cool. Thank you. But yes, this is going to be my take on a desert scene. I saw that comment right before I left. I don't know why the dang phone wasn't plugged in. Mm. Okay, who's ready to go? Did you guys like my ideas? My little mountain, my thing. Here we go. Almost 100,000 likes. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. Okay, if we're going to throw like a far off little mountain back here, right? Maybe let's do a bit of our water first. And then we can hide it. As the trash guys continue to just make a giant amount of noise. We're going to come in with our fan brush. Doesn't matter what fan brush you have. I use the hog hair fan brushes. These are from a company called... I call him GAC Doctor because it's G-A-C-D-R. I mean, how else would you say that? GAC Doctor? So, uh, I use these. They're very cool. Um, they're very good quality. I beat the crap out of them. I paint a lot. And uh, they're, they're a good brush. So, let's come in here. Wherever we touch with this white, if we don't have blue underneath it, it's going to show very bright white. All right, so what if we came back here and we just started going sideways? Just start going sideways. Little flicks, right? Little things. I'm not trying to cover everything. Maybe we need a little bit more than that. Just sideways, not coming down at a crazy angle or anything, right? We're going to bring our little bit of river up here and then maybe he falls off the side, right? And then we can come back and hide it with some dirt or some grass or some sort of something out there. Little deserty things, right? But all we need is a little bit of color out here. Drop in a little bit of bright area, a little bit of dark area. Every so often you get a little bit just like that. They gotta be the right angle, Josh. And then we'll get it figured out, right? Take it over here, very soft. And then we go cover whatever we don't want to see. Just like that. Very soft, very flat. Take this guy out to the side. Right? And then we'll come up here to our where our waterfall is and we'll come over the edge. So now that we've got a little bit of color back there, a little bit of detail way off in the distance. Now let's make a little bit of our mountain. So we'll come up here. Mixing a little black, a little bit of crimson, a little bit of blue. Josh says a little, a lot. <laughs> I say a little, a lot, right? Right there. A little bit of white into our kind of purpley mixture, and it just brightens it up with just a touch, right? Whatever we put here is going to get brighter as it mixes with that liquid white up, up onto the canvas, especially in our sky. It's going to become brighter. So now a lot of people have issues I've found using a palette knife to kind of put a mountain down. So why don't we go and we'll get a little fan brush and we'll come over here and we're going to do this far off little thing with this lighter color paint. 
Again, as we put it up on here, it's gonna look, it's gonna become brighter as we start to mix it down, right? So just decide, what do you want your little mountain thing to look like, right? You can have it be way off in front of our little river by not pulling it down in front. Or if we wanted it to come down in front, we could pull it down. We're gonna put a little couple bushes and stuff back in here, have everything pop right now. You need to have enough paint on the canvas. What is the first P of paint with Josh? Paint, right? Paint on the brush. Then we got pressure, pressure on the canvas. We start pulling out our little mountain, flattening it down. Got our little dark areas over here, right? Just like that, pulling it back, pulling it this way, because our, our land is shaping that way, right? Now we're gonna come in here. We're gonna get down to that little edge where we were, and then we're gonna pull the other way. Maybe we bring this color down, and then we start sliding it down here, right? And you can start to build what you want your little deserty mountain to look like way off in the distance, right? Very cool. Very cool. All depends on what we want to color it like. How do you want to have it colored? So I'm going to take a little bit of our darker brown. All right, we're going to put it off the back. This guy's further away, right? He's way off in the distance. So we're not looking for a whole lot of detail. Just a little bit of... Just something, something out there, right? Let's take it from the bottom, swipe it back up towards the top, just like that. So soft, so easy. Just blending it, right? We're just kind of, we're, we're using the brush to make the color blend a little bit, right? It's all you need. Now we're gonna make up a, a little different color, a little brighter color, because if you're gonna have a dark color, you gotta have a bright color, sort of similar, right? So we'll make up a little bit of that brown, don't want to add too many details back there. All right, we're very far away. Let's come in here with this brush. We'll just load it up like that. Bring it down, right? Let it blend. You got one side light, one side dark, and then we can go back and adjust, do all the stuff we need to do. Right? Got to make those cool sounds, otherwise it doesn't work. Shazoo! As we go down the side of the mountain, right? Then you can go back in with your dark color. Now that we can see where we need to be, right? Add some of our darker color in here because it's not gonna reach, the light's not gonna reach all the way back here, all the way from that sun, right? Go back in, lighten it just a little bit. All we're doing is making it soft, kind of pushing it down a little bit. Nothing crazy, nothing crazy. Shape it how you want it to look, right? Where's your brightness come in? Where are your dark areas? Does it come down a little further? Does it shape this way? Does it go that way? What do you want it to look like? It's very far away, so don't worry about it. And we're keeping a very light amount of paint on it and not adding all that thick texture so we can continue to add layers, right? If it's too close or if it's too much texture, you're not gonna be able to add any bits of cactus in front of it or any other piece of layer of anything, right? Because you've got too much thick paint out here already. And so we're just brushing it out we get that little bit of darkness, a little bit of our lighter color, a little bit of our darker kind of highlight color. And again, we're going to be popping things in front of this so we don't want it to be too thick. If it's too thick, it's going to fight against us the entire time, right? Now, if I'm going to put some bigger cactuses and bushes in the front of this sun, let's throw something over here. Okay, it's all about building the scene however you are seeing it. All right, so maybe our water came... And it was over there, and we're over here, right? Just building it, little sideways swipes, just to have some bright areas and some dark areas. Nothing crazy. Grab a clean brush, because you don't want any of that brown color dirtying up our, our bit of water, right? And then we decide, based on our little pulls, what it's going to look like. You decide. Okay, I do have that brown color on my brush. Why don't we go into our, our yellow? And maybe we'll make some soft, like tan, sandy, dry color grass back here, right? Oh yeah, just like that. Start tapping it in, working it along our, our river, along our little horizon. Very far off, a little bit of grass. Very cool. Just popping it in there, right? Working it in. Again, you don't want to have too much go too far of really anywhere because you don't want to have all that thick paint, right? Maybe it started to climb up the, the side and then it got dark back here, which is why we don't want to have it be so bright, right? Just mix it up and then anything you don't like, you just cover over. It's seriously, that's literally it. Very light little swipes just to soften it way off there. 
Get that little difference in color, and then we'll come pop in something crazy, right? What do you guys think so far? What are we thinking so far, guys? Thank you for all the follows. You guys are awesome. 140,000 taps. You guys are just rocking it, man. You're rocking it. All right, what if we did? Now, we're going to put our foreground and stuff in, so let's not worry about too much of the detail back there. And let's come pop in a few little bushes. Once we pop in our bushes into the front and we start pushing that little bit of river back, then we can do whatever we want, right? Very cool. Take this guy, we can even start coming in down here and planning where our little ground should lay, where our rocks are gonna fall over, right? Where's your stuff happening? And then you place it wherever it is, start covering things up so we can't see where the water comes from, right? Very softly, just that little bit of color back there is all we're really going to need. That's very cool. And then we'll have something else coming down from this side that's going to grow down into here. We'll have some rocks holding up all these bushes. But you got to work in layers, right? Got to go in layers. So I want to go a little bit darker than this color. So I'm going to get a little black, a little bit of blue, a little bit of that brown, and then we'll just pound it into that same purpley mix, right? Scraping it all up so we can come over here. And right where our bushes and our, our little grassy, our river might, uh, meet back there, just take and pop in a few little things, hiding where the water is coming from. That way the water can come from out of our scene, flow through it, and then go down, maybe flow this way, right? All depends on what? What you want it to look like. That's right. Right? Maybe we take our little bit of bush and we pop it around the side. Got to finish it for the buyer, right? Speaking of which, let's do that to the old mountain. Bring that mountain down, a little bit of our darker color. There we go. That way it wraps around. You get a completed finished side, right? Again, you can buy this painting before it's even done if you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. It's 40% off with free shipping. Free shipping. Let's see. If Etsy will let you purchase it, you can, I, I print the, the shipping labels straight through there. So if you can purchase it, it will come to you in the mail. There we go. I had somebody ask from Australia, and after the stream, I went and double-checked. I was like, yeah, it'll go to Australia. I have it set for a ton of places. Tons of places. I sent one to, uh, what was it, to Germany the other day? Something crazy. Somewhere crazy. Right, now we got all this dark color. You have to have all that darkness, right? Need it. Because it's our deep, dark shadows about where all of our little critters are going to live, right? In this deep darkness. Don't cover up all of our water. Again, this is why you don't have a lot of detail back there. Because we don't need a lot, right? It's coming from somewhere. We can see that. We can even cut it off back here. There we go. Come up a little bit higher, right? What do you want yours to look like? That's what it's all about, right? You decide. You push it off. And then see... What's going on? I uh, wonder if we had a little bit of light. A little white back here. Like it was a little line. Maybe the other edge, the other side of the river. Way off. Maybe it's a big old river, right? You come in, just like that, right? Stick it behind all them bushes. We're going to go on top of those bushes with highlights anyway, right? You never come and just try to get the exact coverage. When we go for our highlights, I always pop up a little bit. So let's say, what if we had just a few? Oh, man, this one's going to be so pretty. Okay, before we do our, our bushes, because we're going to have to cover over the water, let's keep it out just like that. Maybe we'll chuck a big old cactus or two in here. Be awesome. Have it sitting on some rocks as it falls down. Man, that's going to be cool. That is going to be cool. Just in case we need any little bit of kind of grass-like texture. Some, there we go. Some are brown, something, just in case for when we go out on our when we come in with our uh, our mountain, we want it to have the same kind of feel, right? It's gonna feed in, all that yellow is gonna feed into the brown as it gets darker and darker and darker away from our, our bit of light source back there, right? Okay, now before we do anything else, who's ready for a waterfall? Are you guys ready for a waterfall? Tell me in the comments below if you're ready for a waterfall. Cactus don't like water, very true. These are gonna be very full well, you see what I mean? The, the cactus that lives right here can't really reach the water. It doesn't really access the water. Yes, you guys are ready for a waterfall? Excellent, excellent. You can see how the scene's coming together, right? Gotta have it play out in your mind. So I like using a big, giant 
a fan brush for a waterfall because you get you can kind of cover more things in easier less attempts right because as we keep swiping over we're going to start ruining all the cool things that happen at the very first go right so we got to decide where our water's coming from i like starting off the back so say it came like this drop it off the edge have it fall down right very cool why don't we do this we'll come back we'll flip the brush over look at how blue it turned just after that one go right compared to the white so we'll flip it over come back in lay it down like that now i want to put something in between right instead of doing it after let's do it right now so we're going to take our bit of white we're going to slide it back like it's come up to the edge and then it starts to fall over right and the more little swipes you do the more details you either reveal or the softer you're going to make it and have less details right now We've got that done. We have to take our brush, our two, big two inch brush. Same thing, over to the side, down, just to soften it one or two times. That's all you need. Just to soften it the littlest bit, you barely get any amount on the few little bristles on the side of your brush, right? Little teeny tiny things. Now, I wanna come up with my palette knife and I'm gonna throw a rock right in here. Like the water had to go around this little bit of stone. And then when you get when you have, uh, when you throw your water back over the top of that, I'll show you how to make it look transparent. Oh, it's so cool, All right? But first we've got to get our rock up over the tip. There we go. You can even push it, I mean, as high as you want and put it back above the horizon back there. You can do that. You can do whatever, right? What if our rock or our stone just bled over here and just blend it into whatever we had going on with these bushes, right? All depends what you want to look like, or if we had, a second bit of waterfall, you kind of come through and roll off that way, right? All depends on what you want yours to be, not what anyone else's look like. What do you want yours to look like? That's what I always say, just like that. That is gonna look cool, guys. All right, now, for my water, we wanted it to roll over the side, right? And I went a little bit crazy with my rock. Here we go. Let's come back, let's wash all the blue off of this. We may be able to actually, yeah, that'll work, that'll work. It's gonna be gorgeous, guys, it's gonna be fantastic. So get your, get your color off that brush, it'll be nice and white, and it'll blend in, it'll be a little bit different. It's gonna be very cool. I'm gonna come over here, fresh white paint on the brush. I love the fresh white paint, look at that, fantastic. I'm gonna come over here, very light pressure. Again, go to the side, have it fall down. All right, turn it over so you got clean white paint. Fall down just like that. You get a little double, double waterfall, a little rock in between. Slide our little bits of water back, All right? Like we have this little, some tumultuous action about to come up as we're about to go over the falls, right? It's all leading towards us and falling off, but you want it to be messy like that. Don't let it be too, too detailed. If you had to be, be too detailed, then it's going to be crazy. Everyone's going to be looking way back here instead of looking at, you know, what they're supposed to be looking at. All right, now we need to take and make up a little bit of color for our rocks. So let's get a little brown, a little yellow, and mix those guys together. A little bit more brown, geez. Let's get out of the yellow pile and bring it over here. There we go. A little bit more brown. Take maybe a little smidge of our darker brown, throw that in there. A little smidge of our darker purple, throw that in there. Mix it all up and you get this gorgeous little brown rocky color, right? Don't need to be hanging on to that fan brush. Now we come over here. Anywhere that our light is going to hit, we need to save for our light highlights. So let's pull that little bit of dark color down. All right, get our darker brown. It's not so dark that you can't see it, right? You can still see there's a difference there. Now we'll come over, a little bit of yellow, brighten up a small little section of that pile just so it's slightly different, right? Come over here, grab that up onto the side, very light pressure. Let it fall. Got to have those dark areas in between your light and your dark. Or in between your highlights and your, and your shadows. Leave those little bits of dark. They look so cool, right? All those little differences in there look really neat. Now we're going to come back and grab up our brush. And just very lightly, very so light, go over the edge, right? Don't need to go too crazy. Don't want to have too much color. I want there to be a little split right there. And then we can just cover over it like that. Like it's just come down, right? You gotta make it in one swipe. <sighs> Wicked. You can almost see through that little bit of rock. Oh, it's fantastic. It's dripping down. Oh, 
Excellent, guys. Excellent little bit of waterfall right there. Have our very bright areas on the top, and then we'll cover up with one more little bush. Remember I told you? I told you we'd be back. And then we had to do our water first. So I'm going to slightly push that back just to soften it. Why do we soften it? Because it's got to be soft so our next thick layer can go on, right? Can't just go thick on top of thick on top of thick. Oh, look at that. That's going to be cool. Hiding all that little bit. Wherever you want to show, you let show. If you want your bushes to be a little bit taller, right? Come up a little bit. Show wherever you want. Whatever, you're, whatever you think would show in yours, right? And then we'll come up and highlight all these with some gorgeous colors. Maybe we'll put a cactus over here. We'll do one more rock on the side. Be very cool. Very cool. So remember, start thinking of a name for this painting, guys, because I've after 693 paintings, by the way, search for number 693, or if you go to my Etsy store and uh, search the word TikTok when you're in, once you're in my Etsy store and you use the search bar, search TikTok or 693, and that'll be this painting. It's available to purchase before anyone else can get it, before we even get done, which is a lot of times what happens during the streams is they get purchased before we even get finished. So, we're gonna start thinking of names. What are we gonna name this painting? And then uh, if it does get purchased, the buyer might choose the name that you picked or put forth. Or if it doesn't get purchased, then I might choose the name that you picked, right? So, start coming up with whatever you think the name should be, and then we'll go and, uh, and uh, title it by the time we get done. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, maybe we'll do a cool little cactus right in here, like just about that tall, you know what I mean? Nice little cactus. So I'll show you this really cool trick about doing highlighting it in, uh, in one fell swoop. It's going to be awesome. Okay. Watch. Why don't we do, I'll just show you just real quickly. I'm going to get a little bit of our darker brown, and our darker green, all on the one side of the brush. Just mixing those both in so it's this dark color. Okay. Just like that on the one side. Now I want to get a little bit of our lighter color, maybe our yellow. Right. A little bit of our thalo green, a little bit of the yellow. So we got a bright color on one side, a dark color on the other side. Now you're like, well, how are you going to use both sides at once? Well, simple little thing. We decide which side is going to have our light on it. So if it's over here on this side of our sun, I would imagine our light would be on this side. And then instead of pushing it flat, we're just going to come at it like this. Instead of having it on either side, we're going to turn the brush sideways with our light on one side. And we're going to come down. And the more we push, look at that. You get your dark green on one side, your light green on the other side. Very cool little cactus. Very cool. Look at all that dark color we picked up. Transferring it once we got into the bushes, right? And then we can go back and adjust the shape, but you want to get all that dark color off. London's in the house. Hey, London. What's happening? Not much. I am going to go and meet someone for coffee, and then I'll be back. Oh, okay. Okay, you'll well, be all right. I'll, yeah, I'll be here. You're doing fantastically without me. Oh, thank you. Got you got mods here. Thank you, thank Everything's you. Everything's good. Oh, look at that, guys. Look at your cacti. Right? Cool little cacti. And it's easy. Couple swipes. Um, okay, where are you? Okay, well, I'll see you when you get back. Okay. All right, guys, let's check this out. Look at that. Oh, gorgeous little thing. And you can do arms or little things, whatever you want to do. All right, you want to add an arm? We can add an arm. Let's add an arm. Let's go over here again. We're going to go through the green and the brown. Just so we have that darker greenish, like camo green. We're gonna flip the brush over, go through the light and our phthalo green, right? And that way we've got all those colors on one bit. Come up here, pushing in, turning, turning, bam. Come in, catch them up like that, right? Very cool. Very cool. All depends on how thick you want yours, how much you wanna hold it, just like that, with one simple fell little swoop, get a cool little cactus. I like him. I never like them all to be the same though, right? So if we're gonna do more than one, we don't wanna have the same arms or anything. Gonna flip the brush over, back into the yellow, back into the green. That way we got the same bits of color. And eh, who knows, maybe you had a little, he's got a little shorter guy over here. Pushing in flat, bring it down. It's like, it's got a little friend, right? Everybody needs a friend. Even the cactuses need a friend. Everybody needs a friend. So, remember to tap on the screen, guys. Tell us where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? I always like to pop back and see just about how many people we got watching. 
Very cool. Remember, the, the lights in here are very bright, and so it may be playing with your eye a little bit as far as the colors, but what we're gonna do is take our bit of darkness, right? Gotta come back into that chunky, dark color. Our crimson, our black, our blue. Turn in the brush, right? We'll come up here, we'll hide just the bottom of where those little cactuses come out. And then you decide where they live, right? Super easy, just like that. Okay, now we're gonna go back in and highlight with all these gorgeous colors. So why don't you guys hit me with the, hit me with a few colors. You wanna see some orange, orange bushes, yellow, green, blue? What do you guys wanna see? Hit me with the colors in the comments below. And maybe we'll go back here and we'll start checking the, the thing. Let's see what kind of comments we got. And that light is bright over there, guys. I'm sorry. The glare. Let's see. Orange. Thank you. Love your painting. Thank you. Really. Ba -ba -ba. Start coming up with names, guys. Start typing in those names. Make sure if you're watching over on YouTube, give me a thumbs up. Orange bushes, pinks, orange, purple. Excellent. I like your guys' style. I like your guys' style. So we've got all this dark shadow, right? This is where all the little critters live. We can't have them not have a place to go hide, right, from all the hawks and stuff. So we need to come in and just highlight little areas, right? Why don't we come in with some yellows? Kind of do the yellows and the greens first. I love those guys. All right, maybe back in here, a couple little things lit up. Not too many, all right? A little bit of desert grassy flowers, some kind of something. And again, I never like having them all in the same place. So maybe we'll come over here, pop a little bit of green into that guy, right? Then we can change color. And do all sorts of stuff. So wash your brush off in between changing colors. And if your paint doesn't stick when you go up and touch, just add that little bit of liquid white. All you need, little tiny bit though. Maybe we'll go into our red over here. Oh, these gorgeous little red bushes, reds and pinks all over the, oh, look at those little pops in there. Guys, that's fantastic, right? Little things, leaving the darkness though. You can't cover everything down all the way. Again, maybe we don't put our red every which where, we just show it in different little places, right? Now, what if we came in, ooh, what about that orange? You know what, we can rock the orange and the red together and they'll kind of mix. Look at this, oh, guys. Little things, right? Leaving that dark area, leaving the light area. We'll throw our deep purple back in here. That purple never likes to show very well for, for the, uh, the highlight. It's very much a low light color. Ooh, what about this gorgeous pink, right? We'll come into an area of our brush. It doesn't have any paint on it. So it's just got these little pink bits of flowers. And maybe they decide they want to start growing down our little, our little hill. Who knows? Who knows what's happening back here? Because I sure don't. A little bit of crimson. Tap it in so you get all this little texture, right? It's all about the texture. And if you don't have enough of that liquid white, it's not going to come off your brush and stick. Remember, you got to have darker, Shadows behind, brighter colors on the top. And always wash your tools if they start getting all muddled up with colors, right? Always gotta wash them, it only takes a second. Very cool, love that. Love that back there. Why don't we throw a few more little bits of that pinky brightness in here, in like that, and then you got you gotta just pop a bit of super bright yellow back, just to feed everything, oh, guys. That is so pretty. You just don't want to do too many things, right? Do too many things and you start to lose all those deep dark areas, all your colors kind of go together and it never ends up looking as good as you thought it would have, right? So just little taps, little things. I gotta, we've been cleaning the brush so much today, I gotta refill my thinner cup. All right, just like that. Remember, you do whatever you want over here, right? You can have the waterfall come down, you can have it be all stone, you can have the rocks or the flowers dribble over the side. You can do whatever you want to do. And that is the fun part about it. Why don't we do one more little cactus off the side over here? Little teeny guy, though. All right, a little of that dark brown with the green. Flip it over into our lighter green and our yellow. And this guy's a little further away, so he's going to be much smaller on the other side of our, uh, other side of our thing, right? We're going to plop him in. Oh, you know what? We did it on the wrong side. Turn the brush over, Josh. You silly. There we go. Now we can put the color and the shadow on the right side. I did them the same way as I did this, realizing that the sun is over there. That's not going to work. So we'll go over here. And there we go. A little bit of dark, a little bit of light. There you go, Josh. Very cool. Soft little guy. 
Maybe he just had the smallest, teeniest little arm right out there. And all you gotta do is fill in those colors, make them a little darker, right? His arm's a little further away, a little smaller. Push it down. Doesn't have to have as much detail off in the distance as it does of our closer guys, right? You know, a lot of times too, they have different, different arms. So he got one arm that was up here. And maybe he came in at a different height. It's not all about making them the same. Very cool. Remember, our guy in the middle, he's got to be big enough to hold up all this stuff, too. If it doesn't look right, or if he's not thick enough, there we go. Gorgeous. Big old monster saguaro out here. And those things grow so crazily that, like, you could literally make it like a giant, like an octopus. I've seen them out there. They're like, they just grow any which way they can get light and water. That's how they're going to be. Now, that guy looks a little weird just standing out there all on his own, right? So you got to take a few little bushes, pop them in. I'm going to stay above our bit of water back here. There we go. Small little things, right? Nothing really that we really need to show back there. Besides our neat little bit of bushes, we'll pop a little bit of grass in front. So I'm making it softer, right? Come in here, grab our little green mix. Tap it in. It's going to look like it's just come from the edge of our grass back there. We got this guy popped up. Very cool. Very cool. All right, going to come over here. And then just unleash this giant mountain that I've been thinking of this whole time. All right, little green. Yeah, why not? Little, little red, little yellow. Pop these guys out there. A little bit of soft color, right? Not as thick. As over here because it's further away it's on the other side of the river don't need to see it as much not everything has to be the same size or brightness or anything right that's the best part that is the best part okay now what if we had another big section of mountain we came down in here with our yellow our crimson our black and our blue just over here like this and again you guys watching on TikTok, you can re-watch the stream over on uh, youtube Whenever you want, right? What if we had this big old sucker come down? Just a giant bit of rock that was all connected. Take away all of this stuff back here, right? Now, like I said, we use a fan brush sometimes because people have trouble with the, the palette knife kind of laying it out. And so what you do is all you're really worried about is what that top edge looks like. So just go around it, right? Have it fall off. Maybe it rotates down. You decide what this big old mountain rock looks like. Because it's your painting. It's not my painting that we're worried about. It's your painting, right? Come up there. Just saving some of that little difference in color where you get all those cool little things. So cool. Leave it very dark in the back, though. So you got to have your crimson, black, and blue. And have that very dark, purpley mix back here. And like I said, we can have it fall over. It can do whatever it wants. It's this big old rock where the river came and it was like, oh, I can't go any further. I got to turn and fall down, right? And then we're going to wash some brushes. So tell me where you guys are watching from. What is your favorite sandwich? Right? Maybe you had a little flat spot out there where the, the hawks could rest and try to find all the mice, right? Swiping it down, different angles, different things, and then you might see something in yours where you're like, oh, it would look cool if it was all coming down at that angle and then we had some shadowy side and then it went down over here and you did whatever, right? It's all up to you. What do you want it to look like? I keep saying that. And again, let's add a few since we're in that same color. We'll come over here and take a little bit of brown, mix those guys up into that same dark color. And who knows, we came off the bottom of this bush. Maybe we popped out a little bit into our waterfall just to hide a little section and then came down like that, right? We got this whole little wall of rock that this whole thing is sitting on. It's about to fall off, right? Just like that. Pop our little rock out into our waterfall, but don't get too much of that white paint, right? That white paint in our waterfall wants to change this color to a very bright color when we need it to stay very dark. All right, now we gotta clean some brushes and I'm totally out of paint thinner in my cup. So 
I can't do anything unless we go back and add some more mineral spirits, right? And then we'll clean these brushes. So tell me where you're watching from. I'm gonna set this big old palette down somewhere. Over here, we'll see how many people we got watching. Excellent, thank you guys, love you, appreciate it. Okay, this is the uh, odorless mineral spirits that we use by a company called Clean Strip. It's good stuff, it doesn't smell. Uh, you can use a company called Jasco as well, they're a good brand, I've used them. Now, I do it over my bucket, don't just pour this stuff in your living room, right? Or you wanna hold it over a trash can or something and get the lid, get that little spout inside your cup first. Otherwise, it could really come out fast and spill and get everywhere. So it's dripping off the bottom of the cup down into my bucket. Right? That's why you don't want to have it above your carpet or anything like that. I don't know why they made it such a hard way to pour. I've never seen anything pour smoothly out of a can like this, ever. All right, there we go, perfect. Let's wash these brushes off, guys. Remember, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? When's your paint anniversary? Because mine's coming up. Mine is coming up. Remember, you can get this painting at 40% off with free shipping. Send it out to you. If you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, get over there, check out the store. I've got tons of paintings. Uh, this one is probably in the 275 to 300 range for the size. I've got older paintings that we uh, have still in the store. This one's about 150. You know what I mean? Different different paintings, different subject matter, different prices all over the place in the store. So it's not about the, the brand new, most expensive ones. Some of the older ones you can get for a wicked deal, especially at 40% off. Got some paintings in there for $91 during the sale. So you gotta get it while the sale's on though. That's the key. If you don't get them while the sale's going, then you don't get the sale. All right, washing off all of our brushes. I went through way too many brushes. I have a, I have a rotation of like, I don't know, 10 fan brushes and three one inch brushes, three two inch brushes, right? So eventually I don't have, I, I don't wanna take all the time cleaning all the brushes when we could be up here painting. So I'll rotate through if we're gonna try to do something real quick, but these ones we gotta clean. And then we'll get back to it, guys. So tell me where you're watching. What's your favorite sandwich? You guys already know. And how do you like the new on-screen shirt, right? Super bright. Says your girlfriend watches me on TikTok. It's hilarious. And true. I can't wait to wear it out to the store or something. It'll be fantastic. Okay, dry those off. Got that one dry. Got a lot of blue paint still left on this guy, so we'll wash him off. Shake it into a can, into the old beater bucket. Beat the devil out of it, right? Gotta beat the devil out of it. That's the fun part. And then you dab it on a paper towel, got to. Gotta to dab it down, otherwise it's still too wet. Okay, so when it sounds like someone's knocking on the door, that's just me banging on my table. Let's see, all right, well, we got somebody checking out our, uh, our, our Etsy store over there like crazy. Someone's actually looking at this one, it's called Chill Out Beach. And this one's about $180 right now. A Little bit smaller, a little bit older. Precious little painting though, it's fantastic. So not all about 200 to you know $300. I've got older paintings in the store, in the store that you can get for cheaper. So go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. I'm, I'm literally trying to do this for a living, guys. And you guys with your amount of, of help have just been so fantastic. And uh, it's literally, it helps pay my bills. You guys are just amazing. Hashtag full-time artist, right? Let it fall down, soften it. We got our rocks over here. Got whatever we plan on doing over here, you can have it be a dark little cave or a hobbit hole or something. What do you feel like, right? Now let's grab up our big old palette. And then we'll mix up some gorgeous little mountainy colors like we had, right? Like we put on this little rock right here. So we've still got that dark shadowy color. Why don't we take that guy and we'll come off the back side of our little ridge over here. All right, just dropping that darker brown. And then every so often, we're gonna mix in a bit of our black as well. All right, so we'll come back with our black or purpley mix go over the top of that guy, and then just let them mix on the knife, on the canvas right there, back and forth until you like how they look, right? Doesn't have to matter. No one else is looking at it but you. What do you like? Is it not looking like you wanted it to look? Does it need to be darker? Does it need to be brighter? 
Do you need to have more shadows over here? Off the back, is the sun not grabbing at every single place exactly the same, right? What's happening on your mountaintop? Come in with that lighter color. Oh, look at the brightness, right? Right where the sun comes down and hits. You get all this lovely color. Sun will come up here, shaking it, rotating, coming down nice and soft. Soft little things, right? You have to have the right amount of pressure, especially when you're doing the knife. That's why it's the second P of Paint with Josh. Paint, pressure, practice, right? Got to have enough paint, got to have enough pressure on the canvas so it'll come off right, drop it down, come off as little cliffs if you pull it down on your different angles, right? All oh, just a cool game of light and dark. It's all we're really doing. We're going, okay, it would look cool if there was a little bit of light right there or a drug over there or it came down, maybe it was on top or it was down underneath. Where does your light come down and hit? And that is where you make... Your highlights right very cool and that's why art is so awesome because everyone's is going to be a little bit different our colors are going to be different our amount of pressure is going to be different right we're not going to see everything in everybody's painting some people might show a little more light yours might be a little darker you know what's happening? yours might come down a little further than theirs did all depends on what's going on when we do it right Maybe the light didn't reach all the way back there. Just so softly, we get that little bit. Now we're gonna take our two inch brush, right? Because we have to make it look a little bit soft, just so lightly. I'm not trying to drag any paint, I'm not trying to push it, just trying to soften it. It kind of helps it dry a day or two faster as well. If you go back and soften some of this texture and you don't have to go all the way to the top, right? Then we're gonna come from the bottom because we went this way with our knife. I'm just going to soften it, soften it, soften it, soften it. Very cool, right? You get that cool little bit of deep darkness, bright areas, dark areas, this area, that area, a little blue and black area up here around that little bit of brightness, right? Just till you have however you want it to look. And then you got this really cool thing, guys. Look at that. That is neat. That deep, dark bit with that little slide. Our little ledge, so cool. Very, very, very light pressure though. Very light pressure, don't wanna mess it up. You push too hard, you're gonna mess up all those cool little details, right? And what else looks neat is if you come back with that same kind of dark bluish, blackish, crimsonish, is that a word, crimsonish? Come down, drop some of those guys right there into our light areas. You get these deep rocks, crevices, where the light just couldn't reach all the way down just by dragging that little bit of darkness, right? Especially back here, it's not gonna, the light's really not gonna reach all the way back there. So you gotta darken it down, darken it down, soften it down, and then you're gonna have a wicked awesome little bit of rock back there. Look at that. The more this little bit of river makes more mist, you could bring the mist up, you could cover it, you could add more plants in here. You could do a little ledge. Let's do a little ledge, right? Just by pulling it off sideways. Now, we've got a little bit of a flat spot right out here, right? Depending on what we make it look like. So if we had a little bit of our brown color, scrape it up, maybe we need to make up a little bit more. Right? Brown mix, a little of our black, throw that in there, gorgeous, right? Scrape it up, pull it out over here. And then who knows, what if it came down? What if we got a little light back in here? This little place, little flat area where the little hawks can come down and sit, right? All based on how we're pulling our knife, how much we're gonna let the paint show, right? We got another little ridge down there. How much of the light shows, how much of the dark shows, what our angles are as we're pulling. And then we go over to the edge and we come down, right? What does yours look like? I always ask you guys that. Because it doesn't matter what mine looks like. I'm just trying to teach you a couple cool little ways to do some different stuff, right? So what does yours look like? That's my question. Take this guy, pull him off so we get that deep dark shadowing back behind that bit of color. Even though it's just black canvas back there, I like to have the same amount of texture. And then every so often you can drag just a little bit of that color over the side and make it look more round. Look at that, you guys. My heck. Right, come back there. Got our real deep dark area as it starts to get 
back by our waterfall. It's very deep and dark, right? And then you can come up and just go back over. Maybe we got a little ledge. And sat out here. Oh, so cool, guys. So, so cool. Drop that bit of color over the edge. Boom. There goes our rock falling down into the pool, right? So again, what do you want yours to look like? How many times do I got to ask? Because it doesn't have to look like mine. That's the point, right? What do you guys think of that rock? Just did a whole little mountain right here in the blink of an eye. Amazing. Wow. Thank you. I appreciate it, guys. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks for all the thumbs up over on YouTube, guys. Can you do a mini canvas? No, 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 no. Mini canvases, the smaller the canvas, the more difficult it is, right? The bigger the canvas, the more room for our happy little accidents to grow into something beautiful, right? Like this whole little cliff. Could have been a whole happy little accident, but it grew into this gorgeous thing because we had enough room to do it on, right? As we're piecing together these scenes, if you're not, if you don't have enough room, you know, a, a little paint on the knife on a tiny canvas is a lot of paint. You know what I mean? It's very weird. So we don't do little canvases around here. I have always said that uh, the bigger canvas, the more room for your happy mistakes to turn into something beautiful, right? All right, let's take a little bit of that color over here. Maybe we had a few light areas on the tip top of this rock. Just pulling, changing, and we come down, right? What gets lit up in your mind? That's totally up to you. How bright it wants to get, how hard you pull, how much you blend. What do you do, right? Totally up to you. Come back to that dark color. Maybe a bit of our dark brown mixed in with our darker color. And we need to get more black out of the box, guys. We're running out, running low. All right, mix that guy up. Now we have that same thick, dark texture that we can go over our dark areas with, right? We leave them dark, but then you go back and put in that extra deep, deep, deep darkness. The deep darkness that lives down below. Right, just like that. So cool. Oh, guys. Like literally, literally the coolest thing. We're literally having the time of our lives right now. Right? Just hanging it off. What gets lit in your mind? My rock gets lit a lot. It gets lit. Maybe come up here and grab some of that. Throw in some more deep dark shadows in the back back there, right? Not everywhere can reach. Doesn't all have to be the same amount of, of brightness or darkness or anything. And the more little things you put in there, the cooler it's going to look, guys. Right? Very softly, though. Very, very softly. Very softly. Come over here so, so, so soft. Oh my God, so soft. Don't even touch it. Don't even touch it. Dang, get this really cool little bit of rock out there. And it looks even, I mean, that, that this little slidey action right here, our little side to side slidey bit that's coming down, this looks so cool. I want it to just continue down the whole dang canvas, right? And we can let it go as far as we wanted it to go just by changing it, adding a few little things, leaving a few areas very dark, coming back in with our darker highlight or our darker shadow bits so it's the same kind of texture, right? You literally be able to feel this painting when we get done and it's all dry. You'd be able to feel all the cool little textury bits in it. So, so cool, guys. Oh, I love it. Very, very, very neat. Very neat. Very neat. I love all these little things. We can let all these flowers kind of drip down, right? Maybe, guys, just maybe. Oh, I just thought of something, right? What if this guy was over here, too? Little things sliding back and forth down into the depths, right? Get this deep darkness down in there. Oof, I don't know if I want to put this one up for sale. I like it too much. Look at that kind of swiping so we line back up, but we're not gonna show every single thing, right? I love those little things. Oh my good nights. Woo -hoo -hoo, guys, look at that. Holy cow, just by taking the smallest little bit of darkness or whatever's left on our knife and just dragging it across that dark. Good hell, that's good. I like this one, guys. Holy moly. Right, such light pressure, not trying to drag the paint, not trying to pick up paint here and deposit it into our dark area. Very light, light, light pressure. 
much. A little bit harder pressure on the side though, right? We don't care about those little streaks, little bits of light. This is the big thick stuff we don't want to move because that would be bad. Now we're gonna fill in all this little area with gorgeous little bits of flowers like they grew down and their seeds took hold and leading down into our water. So what do you guys wanna see first? Should we finish the water? Should we add the flowers? What do you think of those rocks? Just very simply and easily, you get a very cool little waterfall. Keep going, thank you guys, thank you. No, I'm not done with the water yet. It looks cool as like a deep dark pool down there, like a, like a cave we're coming down. But no, we're not done with the water yet. I'll throw the water in right now so we can see what it looks like, right? So then we came over here and we fell down all at the right angles though. It's gotta be the right angles. Lighten it up and we drop it down. Just very light little touches, right? Where is it gonna hit in your mind? That's up to you, like I always say. So we'll come in here, loading up the brush and I gotta get kind of center here. And then we'll just start swiping side to side. Little things, not gonna add too much paint though, right? Side to side, where does it line up with your, you know, where do your rocks come in and hit? Where's all the deep darkness, what's going on? And then we're leaving this little corner in here so we can come back in and tap, right? We're gonna tap up a little bit. Wherever I feel all this amount of water was flowing down, I would imagine there would be a little bit of spray and foamy action as it was coming down and hitting, right? And so what we're gonna do for that is take a clean, dry one inch brush and just start making circles, kind of working it up into that little bit of dark area. So we just fill it a little bit, right? Come in here, small little circles, small little things, not really trying to grab our water coming down just when it's down here, right? It's already come down and hit. And then back in behind all of that mist is where our mystery comes in. What's happening back there? Right, maybe this guy would just very lightly pull it over to the side. You get all this cool stuff, guys. Oh, jeez, it's so nice. Love it, love it, love it. Where do you want to go with your bit of foam? How deep does your rock go back in there, right? All based on you. Now we're going to take that bit on the water, pulling it out nice and soft, and sometimes a little harder. If it doesn't stretch with enough pressure, you know what I mean? What's the second P of Paint with Josh? Pressure. So you got to put a little bit more pressure on it. That looks cool. That looks cool. All right, I'm gonna take our little bit of white down in here, leaving a difference between bright area. We're gonna leave a little bit of darker disconnect. Have a little bit of light shine right there. Just have those different colors. And what are we gonna do with that? We're gonna soften it, stretching it as far as it'll stretch out, making it soft. All right, pulling it back this way. Back and forth until it looks however you want it to look. That's the key. It's not how I want it to look, it's how you want it to look. Take our bit of white, come back in here, jiggling it around, All right? Maybe we get these little bits that come along the edge, some sort of something. All depends on what you want yours to look like. Couple little details here, there, and everywhere. But again, what do we do with those little things? We soften them just a little bit. At least that's what Paint With Josh does. So if you like yours a different way, or if you want to leave it looking just like that, and very nice and textured and thick, right? Big splashes, then you do that. But I like to make mine a little bit softer. We're not taking away the detail, we're just taking away that texture, right? You still got all your bright areas and your dark areas and all the stuff, just taking away that texture that's in there. And so it's not a sloppy, runny thing, right? Very, very cool, guys. So, I love this rock right here. This reminds me of all the rocks I saw out in Utah when we just came back from vacation, uh, what was it, last night? No, was it not? No, it was Thursday. Yeah, it was Thursday, two nights ago. We came back from vacation. And uh, yeah, it was so much fun. Okay, got to see all sorts of cool little rocks. We went out to the, the literal center of Utah, like the state of Utah. If you were to put a, a pin right in the center of it, that's where our cabin is. It's in the Fish Lake National Forest area, Capitol Reef National Forest. Um, it's a whole lot of fun out there. And you know, you get to see really cool little things. Not, not, too, much, not too many cactuses out there but cool rocks that gave me inspiration anyway, right? Darkness. Okay, who's ready for some bushes, guys? You guys ready for some flowery bushes? Some cool things? I'm gonna sit back here. Remember, in my last stream, I got to 1.1 million likes on the screen. 1.1 million likes. There's just something about that faraway cactus I don't like. Just something about him. What do you guys think? 
something about that cactus and what can I do if I wanted to get rid of that cactus? You guys think I could get rid of this cactus and make you think that you'd never, it'd never even been there without messing up the rest of the painting? Do you think I could do that? Yeah, I don't like him either. He's a funky little cactus. No, you don't want me to get rid of him? I don't know, guys. I don't know. All right, well, we've been going for, what, an hour and 15 minutes. So I'm going to end the YouTube stream. Anybody watching on YouTube, come over to TikTok because I need to have my, uh, I need to have one of my devices in case the painting sells, right? So uh, everybody watching over on YouTube, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for checking this one out. It turned out fantastic. And obviously you can go any which way you want, but come over on TikTok. We're going to continue the stream over here. And we're going to have a whole lot of fun. So now I'll be able to turn off one of my cameras. Good out.